Hello, welcome to episode 99, Checkpoint Chat. I'm Alessandro Barbosa. I'm joined, joined digitally uh, by Matthew Figuera. What's up? Yo, you've, you've been spread. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you've, been, you've been spreading those, those coronies though through the microphone. You've got yeah, I've been a... coughing a lot. It's because I went for a run and the cold air. Can I tell you? I've, so generally, I've been running with um, that little F&B buff that we both have. Oh, from the, br- the branding is so on point. It's so on point. I mean, even, even got those F&B socks from the run oh. that we did. <laughs> the socks, not bad. Not did, bad. Did I, did I talk about it? No, it must have been around this week. My brother would be so pissed because he works for Standard Bank. Mm. But the branding, I don't know if we spoke about it on air or off air last week, but the branding, I've got the F&B shirts, the F&B socks and the buff, which I think you do as well. The shirt. I, oh yeah, I do have the shirt, yeah. And and during one of my recent runs, I wore all of it. <clears throat> so oh God, like, you were just like walking at it. <laughs> you, you were literally the point that they, they host that run because they're like, yeah, yeah. people are going to run with our, our apparel. It's It works, it works because I think I've got like a stack of running shirts I've collected over the years and I think mm. three or four of them are F&B shirts. So I cycle the, through them pretty regularly. The F&B ones are nice as well because they're like Puma mm. shirts, I think. Um, it's not like the uh, Soweto Marathon shirt, which is like sandpaper. Which one did you get? I got that green black one. one. No, the black the one. Black one. I don't I'm know. I'm just traumatized by that because firstly, Soweto Marathon 21K was hard as hell. <laughs> but then also the roughness of that that material by the time i had finished i had literally started bleeding on my nipple oh my god <laughs> i'm not even what, joking i was in so much they pain give you, they give you that uh chafing cream you gotta use you, that stuff man ne, ne, oh. no next time i'm putting like plasters on my nips <laughs> just like straight up I, I don't think i got that shirt but I, there was one i got the year before which is a green one uh which was the nike sponsored uh, one. oh uh, i've seen that one which yeah was, i didn't get that a, one a that one was nice yeah. i remember that and, one and there's <coughs> another one it's, it's also another green yeah i don't know if i uh, actually you got the black one because you did the 21 it's yeah. a different okay, yeah. i got the green one why uh, would actually, they give a black shirt to people who are going to be in the sun for three hours well uh, yeah well the, we didn't get a black shirt though yeah exactly no but why would they give like anyone, anyone a black shirt you're just soaking <laughs> up that sun you're just like Hey, oh, the park ride, if you do 100 runs, you get a black shirt. Yeah, then they're, they're trying like, to tell you to stay home. Yeah, they're like, hey, running's bad for you. <laughs> the, the vitamin D you're getting, you can't get too much. You, you can get too much of it. It's fine. Stay home. Did you it's Did you good. ever reach uh, 100? I know you got your 50. Yeah, yeah I've, I've, I've got the black shirt, which is funny because I, I reached 100 like a very long time ago. Mm. And then I just never collected the shirt. Oh, I thought and, you did that for uh, your 50 because I remember when I started park running with you for the first time, you were like, oh, yeah, I'm about to hit 50 or... No, yeah, but I mean, that, that was, you forget, that was actually a long time ago. Because when you started running, we were actually still doing the original Modifantine Park Run. Mm. I did um, that route, I think, three times before they yeah, changed. Yeah, then, then they moved to the new one. And that one I haven't done <clears> for a long time. Actually, I'm, I, I do miss Park Run. It's it's nice to, to run on Saturday morning to the Park Run, do it. And I don't think I've done a Park Run since we started the podcast. That's true. I mean, we often record on a Saturday. Well, can I tell you the... As much as it sucks to not record in person, it's it's nice to have the option to run in the morning yes, and then I can yeah. just podcast straight after. I think especially mm-hmm. for you because you were commuting here uh, most weeks, so it's like <clears throat> like a forty minute drive podcast, then a forty minute drive back. It's the, like, the lockdown has given me many hours back in, of my mm. life. <laughs> yeah, of, just, and you too just driving. Sure, during the week. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's just like easily about an hour and a half to two hours a day extra that I just yeah. have because I'm not driving. Although and, hey, the downside to that is I'm listening to podcasts less. Yeah, that's I, I've I've listened to basically zero podcasts. And the thing yeah. is, I usually listen to podcasts when I run, mm. um, but th- there's been a string of muggings like oh, no. within, our, within our radius. So um, to dissuade any sort of thing, like I'm too, too nervous to run with, earphones so i've been oh, running hectic. with earphones yeah that's shit i'm but sorry it, to hear that no it's all good but i think i think from what we've heard like particularly vulnerable people are being targeted so i think there were, there were three in the last week one one person where it's like a, a mother with a child in a pram uh, oh and god come se- on people like yeah and and the second one was two teenage girls and like they obviously preying on I mean, they can pray on everyone, don't get me wrong, but I think if I'm running with Lenska, for example, it's unlikely that we'd be an easy target. Mm, mm. 
So yeah, also, but you two are fucking fast. You could just like yeah, my like thing is, I'm like, on. I don't know how to react, but chances are, if I could run, I would run. <laughs> <laughs> I just be like goodbye. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, shit happens. It's I think I think it sucks. I was I was saying something. Oh yeah, I started this entire story with my run. Um, <laughs> so if if and be buff. That's yes. what I usually run Oh my with. God, sorry. I, I, I steered you off that. No, topic. no, we both sidetracked <laughs> completely. Um, so it was in the wash because I'd done a run earlier this week and that thing gets like manky and mm. disgusting. Oh yeah. <coughs> so I have these other three cloth face masks that um, mm. I bought that like sling on your ears and whatever. And I was like, cool, I'll use one of those. Okay. Man, I must've got about two minutes in before I was like, I'm going to pass out because mm. this thing's not letting air through. So I'm literally like, Re- taking massive like uh inhales of just carbon dioxide so yeah. i just like put the mask down under my chin and whenever mm-hmm. i ran past someone i quickly put it up put and then put yeah. it back down because i was like i'm gonna die it was horrible yeah, shit i've never run i've only been running with a buff and i must say the first the first time i ran with it it was like very annoying because you're not used to it it's like mm. it's, i can't breathe it's hot but I must say, the more I've run it, it, it uh, so used to it now. It's yeah, like, the the buff, the buff also like the first one or two runs, I was like, oh, this sucks. Mm. Especially because it, near the end of the run, it's so like sweaty and uh, it's, ugh, so, it's gross. It's it's moist, dare I say. It's real moist. <laughs> <laughs> it's it to the point where halfway through the run, I, I take I quickly take it off and flip it around just so that it's oh like, wow, it's got double the use. <laughs> but I must say, I've never run at the buff before, and it's something I'll definitely consider for. Even after lockdown and this whole mm. thing's blown over for winter, it's actually really nice. Yeah, I've been noticing Holy the same. Shit. It's super nice yeah. to keep your face warm. Yeah, mm. I'm just I just need good that. running gloves now because my hands, man. Oh yeah, I've I've got I just got a pair of gloves, and what I do is when I start running, I put them on because my hands get cold, and I just put them take put like put them on, take them off. The however I see mm. fits. Like constantly. So. I still <gasps> I still recall those um those times when you used to do five k's before the park run. And I used to meet you at like half past seven in Marfantine mm. in the dead of winter. And it was just Your like my hands, cold. my hands just cannot deal. So cold. Yeah. yeah but my, my hands, hands and feet in the winter generally usually ice cold, which I'm told is a result of bad circulation. <laughs> okay. So, so, so this week, <coughs> Lenska, Lenska looked at it like, shame, like your hands and feet are cold. Let's see. It, it's a bad circulation. Let's see if there's a way to like solve that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, the thing what does it say it's like don't smoke exercise more eat i'm like i'm doing all of this <laughs> i do <laughs> all of this nothing i can do yeah i can't improve it so I'll uh, my it. my hands get cold a lot like it's it's the one thing i hate about winters like when i get up and i've put everything on and i'm warm and i get to the office or now at home and i'm typing and mm, i just oh i can feel God. i'm slower because my fingers are just like it's so uh, like uh, yeah. Not, yeah. not responsive try playing kind of strike with cold fingers uh, I mean, it's a hard I, I could play Counter Strike <laughs> with the best gloves in the world, and I'd still be shit. Still <laughs> you're you're ninety percent of everyone else. My God, that game, game is hard. That game, yeah, myself included. I watch people playing Valorant, um, and I'm just like, <sighs> I appreciate watching this, but I can't play this game. I mm. just don't have the the patience to to learn it. That I, said, I, I do want to get into Rainbow Six Siege because that shit looks fun. Uh, well, that's the same. It's the same. It's very concept, similar. Though. It's yeah. Slow what low time to kill mm-hmm. but but on oh my god look at that monster yes some habits never die eh? lockdown can take away your freedom and your sense i've been buying six packs like crazy you have no idea <laughs> um i actually got a valorant key this week oh really um it's it's funny because my counter strike group a lot of those friends of mine this week posted screenshots like oh, hey look i got my key whatever so do you okay. know how to get a key if you if you, you have to, to watch to a to twitch play. stream or you create to, a bot to watch twitch, twitch streams for you yeah if, if you'd like super desperate so uh, <coughs> a lot of my friends have been tuning into streams in the hope of getting a drop and a, a lot of them actually got got a key down i thought oh shit like we actually have enough people to to actually play because um, what's it is it five per team or six i think per it's team? five per team okay. yeah so i was like oh let me <coughs> like i haven't even tried let me let me get a key <laughs> I left my Twitch on half a day. I got a drop. Oh, wow. Like, I didn't even have to grind. Or there are people so like, who've been doing it for like weeks at a time. Oh God, I, yeah, I was just very lucky. So I've, I've got a key, but uh, it, apparently you need a VPN to download it. When you play it, you, it's Oh, because we don't, we don't have yeah, local <sighs> but servers. I'm like, uh, I don't want to have to jump through hoops to play it. Do you know what you do? You don't yeah. play Valorant and you just sell your account. 
oh my god, make millions. Mm-hmm. No, I don't want to sell my, my Riot accounts. All my League of Legends stats are on there. All the tens of hours I've played. You're good, good <laughs> MMR. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm keen MMR. to see you stream Valorant, though, because I think that's definitely a game that speaks to your interests. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> I, from what I've watched, it's, it's like 100% the movements and the mannerisms of Counter-Strike. Mm-hmm. I've just, like, honestly dressed up differently. Like, there are a couple of abilities, but th- that shit where it's like you throw, like, a, that bubble pops up. I'm like, that's a smoke grenade. Yeah. So it's like it's a very obtrusive thing. smoke grenade because it's like, yeah. man, you really can't see. You can't see shit. Yeah. I know a lot of people give that game shit for how it looks, but I think it looks kind of nice. I No, I, I really like it. Even yeah. and what I think, from what I've seen, they've nailed the feel and the sound like sorry it, it's 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 a direct it's like got taken some direct inspiration from Counter-Strike and it nails that mm-hmm. feel and the mm-hmm. sound of it in my opinion like the way the web like when you pull out a weapon and it like they you know they usually like pull back the the lever or the trigger or whatever mm-hmm. it's just very satisfying <clears throat> i've uh, seen some garbage shit going around though with um <clears throat> the community and just um women who are playing Valorant and just like no, no. guys on there like cause I've seen now three instances of three different female streamers who are like as soon as they're spoken into the mic like the their teammates who are guys will like purposefully kill them or like get in their way and it's like guys wow of male gamers such dicks I'm just like jeez like <coughs> it's just yeah That's anyway ridiculous. but even I yeah. think it was um one of uh, Riot's executives or higher ups was like yeah i don't solo queue in valorant because it's too toxic and it's like oh my god this is your fucking I'm, game I'm, like i'm not i'm not shocked yeah i don't know Pe- anyway it's got to be better <laughs> let's check when chat talk about video games like valorant and but, toxic but, gamers valorant, toxic gamers angry male gamers mm. you've, come, you've come to the right place if that's what you want to hear i finished a video game last weekend <gasps> what'd you finish half-life alex uh, we didn't. Did we God. talk about Half Life Alex last week? I, we did, but I hadn't finished it, and then I spent uh, most of the weekend finish it? okay. finishing uh, it. Yeah, well, that feels like a lifetime ago. I think I know it does. Time, this week feels so long. Yeah, you, I think at the time you had, you spoke about that level chair. Yes. I yeah. Think? Okay, I, so, yeah. I think I actually ended up it. finishing the game on the Saturday that we recorded, like afterwards. Okay. So straight after. <clears throat> um, well, that's interesting. There's not much more I can talk Do about tell. because I don't want to spoil things. Like, but no, holy I'm crap. Afraid. Holy was crap. It, was that ending satisfying? Let me tell you that this game was billed as a prequel. This is more of a sequel than a prequel. What? It um it fundamentally changes the Half-Life story um in a big way. It's not just like, oh, this colors in Alex before she ever met Gordon Freeman type mm. of thing. This is like seriously like, oh crap, they they are sending the foundations for what could Half-Life potentially three. be a Half-Life 3, yeah. Half-Life 3. Um, oh so I, I don't want to say much more because I, I, when the lockdown ends, I desperately want to get you to play this because like you all oh love boy. this. Um, and I think the last third of the game is definitely its strongest. The, 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 mm. the first two thirds are good. Uh, they're great, actually. But the last third is just like, holy shit. It's just like one amazing set piece after the next. Like Jeff was shit. just the start of it. And then it gets... And it, yeah, it's wild. It's so good. It, it gives really me good. it gives me so much joy to see you falling down this half life. Man, hole. I, I I'm just like I'm in that position now where I'm like, Valve, please make more. Half and I'm li- like, oh my god. Three. Yeah, you see, you welcome to what fans have been wanting for like the last 10, 15 years. I know it's so bad, it's, and it, I've I've done it all in the space of like three months to myself. Yeah, it's sometimes like you forget about it. Then when you bring it up, I'm like, oh, I've loved three. It's, it's got such such trauma just wishing about this thing. That game is something else. It's definitely the best VR game I've played in terms of like it showcases like what a full length uh, you know narrative game could be in VR. Yeah, that that's my thing because a lot of VR games that you've played and that are just on the market in general. Um, they tend to be like these smaller bite-sized experiences. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I mean, with with some exceptions, like Resident Evil 7 is a full game, but it's not specifically built for VR, but it's got yeah. VR support. Yeah. Um, and like I mentioned last week, you could play The Forest in VR, but it's not specifically built for VR. This is like the first ground up VR exclusive game. I feel yes. that's like a proper package. I mean, how long do you say it took you? Like 12 it hours? It took me about 
12 hours yeah so around the same time as a you know a half-life 2 or something like mm. that but but you, you you bring up a good point the um because i played resident evil 7 in vr and that game works just fine in vr like it's a mm. good experience in vr <clears throat> but it is a game that is originally designed for not vr with vr support whereas alex is the complete opposite mm. like it fa- that's why i don't understand this mod like okay i understand people wanting to play the game who don't have vr headsets like i get that but i don't think the game functions without vr because so mm. many of its interactions and its moments hit because it's your hands doing the things yeah um yeah i mean like th- that that one launch trailer or whatever or, or they had those three batas like walkthroughs whatever mm-hmm. the one moment that always stood out was alex gets into a firefight and sh- like it was naturally she just pulled open a car door for cover yeah so yeah. it's like you can look around and huge your environment for stuff like that which you you can't specifically do in other games no and and even even if you did like even if it was say in a first person shooter like a button press it's very different like you going up to a car pressing a button and your character <clears throat> running through an animation to open the car door it mm. feels very it's like you can see the strings behind the the puppetry yeah. whereas with Alex there are so many interactions where I'm like oh right I could do this um mm. like like you said I could open the door or like I'm being shot so I take cover behind a, a pillar and I know exactly where to stand because it's me standing there so I know mm. within the context of the space and <clears throat> they do so many things um like with your hands that I just don't think translate to a controller like to control, all the yeah. hacking mini games use your hands like there's this one where you have to use your your left hand to like basically hold this this holographic uh, globe and mm. you use your other hand to move like this uh this blue wire through like a maze of red wires almost like um yeah so so like you're using your hands to like delicately navigate this thing while using your other left hand to rotate this globe like uh, okay. that doesn't work with a controller like it just yeah, that, it doesn't have the same feel that's why like as much as i'm tempted to play i mean like we've spoken about how there are mods and there's like there are ways to play it with art vr mm. Um, I'm tempted to. I've been tempted to play that purely so I can get the story mm-hmm. bits, but uh, it's a waste. I'll wait. I'll yeah. wait for the proper experience. And I think people will actually be disappointed because, like, it's five fights are never like fr- they nowhere near as frantic as Half Life Two yeah, because, Half-Life like, 2, yeah. it would never work in VR. Like, mm. so you know, it Alex is way, way slow, way more slow. Um, mm. like you can't sprint, you don't do anything. It's much slower pace, but that works in the context of VR. So, yeah. <laughs> and I think the, the ending also, it plays around with, with VR to, to deliver like w- its big, like final moment. Mm. And I just don't think that hits without it. Yeah, so without it. Yeah. Mm. I, it, it, it's hard. Like, I hope future half-lives aren't exclusive to VR because I do think it is a case of, very few people have access to the hardware mm-hmm. required to play it. Um, but at the same time, I'm also glad a company like Valve with the resources could commit to something to say, this is what a VR game can be like mm. if you just say, <laughs> this is what we're just going to do. All that had money people have spent finally was worth it. It's, they, put, <laughs> they put it to good use. They put it, they well, made the VR killer app. They really well, did. I, I'm curious to see like if they ever release how many units have sold yeah um, because yeah. the fact the fact with when let's be honest when the game is announced like the valve index whatever it was sold out mm-hmm. and, and the quest as the, well it was it's the most expensive headset on the market i um, i tell you research. i missed that thing i really wanted one oh uh, shit but, but you know what i mean like yeah it's, it's not like a, a a cheap entry point no like it's a it's a thousand like, dollars for yeah, for the, people the like setup. i'm buying that shit just to play this one game so yep. yeah yeah and know. and i mean that that's that's i mean it's a thousand dollars just for the headset that's <gasps> not even what that's not even taking into account the pc you need to run this game like so you, you you played it on the quest right yeah do, so, do you think the experience was fun with the quest? You don't, I definitely you, like, think so. Like, I think like the Valve Index, I mean, it's built for that specifically, I think. Yeah. Do you feel it was fun with the quest? Yeah. So like the Valve Index would have been fun. Like there were moments where I was like, man, this really would have been a bit better on the Valve Index. 
because mm. especially because the index's um, controllers track your fingers individually, whereas the Quest can't oh, do yeah. that. Um, and also it's like, it's got a high refresh rate and it's smoother and it's designed mm. to be working with your PC. The Quest, the Quest feels a bit more hacky because mm. firstly it's using like um, Oculus's own beta software to like stream the game from your PC to the headset, stuff like that. Mm. So there's a lot of finicky stuff that I had to get past, but the actual game was fine. Like oh. I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything. How does it stream to your headset? Is it Wi-Fi or what is it? So there are two there are two methods. So the, the Oculus Oculus's own method is to use like a very fast USB three uh, oh, three point one cable plug directly in. Okay. But man, I had so many issues with that. Like sometimes, like I had an extender that didn't work. Sometimes it would work for like an hour, and then the then the, it would lose connection briefly, and the game would freeze. And I oh, know um, it was bad. So like. I hopped between that and a a wireless solution, which actually worked really well. So oh, wow. um, this this app that I bought for $20 that was able to basically stream the game to my headset wirelessly, which was awesome. <laughs> so, this game's got a high entry <coughs> point, like a headset, $1,000 software to, or not, not $1,000, Quest, like what? $400. $400. Yeah, uh, software software to make it work twenty dollars. It's, I I <laughs> think the shit. quest is just such a good value proposition because it's like, you can play something like Alex, but then you can also play something like Beat Saber completely wirelessly. Yeah, and I was playing quest, that the other day, and it's it's amazing. The quest the quest tempts me because it's for that alone. Mm. The fact that it's wireless and you can play Beat Saber. I am um, very happy to hear that Oculus or Facebook is apparently working on a second iteration of the quest that is specifically lighter because mm. yeah that because it's got so much hardware packed into the headset it's like heavy. it's so top heavy like it mm. puts so much pressure on your face that it's not super comfortable for long amounts of time so <sighs> if they make that comfier a plus that explains the six pack <coughs> on your forehead the, <laughs> do you know the amount of times i came out of vr <laughs> and my parents are like what the hell's wrong with your face because i've just got this like <laughs> massive imprint on my face that's such a mean thing for your parents to say like hey <laughs> what's wrong with your face <laughs> i look like the two of you <laughs> <laughs> this is your fault oh, what, do, what do you guys say yeah you, i got some bad genes what do you say drunk with my <laughs> yeah exactly i wasn't born into this world oh out of my God. own volition god oh shit god damn it that's um, good I'm, I'm very keen to play that game yeah no i when the lockdown ends i'll transport my stuff to you and let you play because oh, i think you will so much shit fucking love that stuff it's um it's good. Some, so yeah, good Alex crack. Alex is a good game. Um other than that, I've been I dove into Assassin's Creed Origins, which I've owned for years, but just <gasps> haven't now you're playing it. Yeah, it's a combination of like Valhalla <clears throat> Assassin's Creed Valhalla making me interested again in the series and then just wanting like a sort of palette cleanser, like something that's mm. a bit straightforward and, and easy to play and I've been really liking Origins mm. a lot. Um, yeah, I, I need to get into I want to grab Origins and Odyssey at some stage. They actually were on sale. And it's funny because I really waited up. I was like, shit, I really want to play both of them. Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh, you know what? It's like 300, 400 bucks, which isn't a lot for a game, games of, the, of that caliber. Wait, was that each or for both in combination? I, I, no, no, no. I think it was each. So okay. like, say 300, 400 range, which isn't bad. Like I'd buy one of them at a time. Mm -hmm. But then I looked at good old Game Pass, which I'm subscribed to. I'm like, huh, I paid, I'm paying 50 bucks a month and I've got mm. like at least five games in here that I want to play. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. nah, like I'll wait. Mm -hmm. Well, now, yeah. ep now the Epic Store's got a sale and both of them are on there. Well, oh, is it on the Epic? Oh, why are you like this? And yeah. if you buy one, you'll probably get a coupon, a $10 coupon to buy the other. Why Epic? And and then use Epic giveaway GTA 5, just unrelated. Yeah, just okay. like that, yeah. Okay, Epic. Cool, 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 cool. It's not like we all have time machines and infinite time <laughs> for all this shit, but okay. But um, yeah. Origins, Origins is cool. It's like... Um, <clears throat> I'm basically playing an Egyptian cop, Bayek, who's, <laughs> he's, he's called a Magi, but he's basically an Egyptian cop. He's just dealing with people's issues there and avenging things. Um, it's a very emotional story. I kind of really like mm. the story. And, um, uh, oh yeah, I've, I've read the story is really good. The story is really good. The acting is really good. Um, but the real star for me is just the setting. It's just like mm. such a breath of fresh air that it's 
firstly Egypt, which is not you know super well represented in games, um, mm. and it's just gorgeous, like unbelievably yeah. beautiful game. Um, and it, I think it works a lot with the Assassin's Creed philosophy of like lots of places to climb, lots of things to do. Um, I know it's got the RPG elements, which I'm enjoying, but I can get why people don't enjoy it because like want they want to stab people with their hidden blade and kill someone, not you know have half their health go down. So, mm. um, but I'm digging it. I'm doing a you know a handful of side quests here and there, and then continuing mm. the main story. And it's good. It's really really good. I think I'm like ten or twelve hours in, and I'm just like oh wow. Every every day I play like an hour or two and it's just like good comfort food. I That's really cool. like it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm definitely feeling I need to. I mean, n- never played an Assassin's Creed. Shocker. Ever. Um, but I, I've definitely been feeling since Origins that I think I need to dive into the franchise because I think I don't know what it was about the the previous Assassin's Creeds, but to be completely honest, it just never appealed to me. Like mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. Something just never pulled me into it. Um, I don't know, maybe it is the RPG elements or maybe it is the fact that these are so highly regarded like a breath of fresh air for mm. the franchise that's got me interested. And like Valhalla, I'm I'm curious to play because I do want to see that Norse setting. Yeah, um, after the God of War got its hooks into uh, you. After God of War, yeah. I mean, it's like a, a setting, it's like a bit of history that I actually know very little about. Mm-hmm. And as interesting as it, is, as it is, and I find I've just never done any reading or really looked into it so what better way than to you know play a game that's got some some good old vikings in it that's that's kind of always been the hook for me with assassin's creed games is because i love history i studied history in high school um and just its settings were always a big draw for me like yeah assassin's creed 3 which i don't like as a game was fascinating to me because it was like the american revolution Mm. and the same with unity i didn't like the game but the french revolution is one of my favorite historical things to learn about so experiencing them from a context of a game that takes liberties with actual history but it's fun to see it weave through events that i know of you know what i mean Mm. so yeah i think odyssey in particular i'll i'll think i'll really enjoy because that is greek history Mm. and mythology and i think like whether you learned it all at school or not, there, there's something where I think a lot of people like offhand just know about like the Greek gods, for example, mm-hmm. and what happened, what went down in Greece with like bits and pieces of history. So I think I would enjoy that one as well. And that one, apparently, I haven't played it, but I've read enough about it to know that it leans heavily into the mythology side of things. Yeah, there's, uh, like, which is pretty I, I, cool. I haven't, I haven't watched or read Ned enough about it, but I know there's some actual like non-reality things <laughs> yeah there's there, there's some so. crazy shit happening there yeah. wonder if you run into kratos like oh, a cassandra nice from assassin's egg. creed and kratos just fucking shit up would be i sincerely cool. hope there's an easter egg for god <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be really cool and they could do another one with Valhalla now. <laughs> yeah maybe cassandra meets like zeus and he's like man i have this like bastard child who's who's messing things up in this other realm well, i gotta take care of him he's got a red full- scar yeah, we come full circle. Then God of War Two is actually set in Egypt. Oh my God! <laughs> Took inspiration from each other. Like, hey, yeah, although, Kratos just killing God, the sun god, god Ra did, or something. Did did set that shit up with like halfway or like two thirds into the game, and it it sort of like delves into the different like how Kratos came into the Norse realm. Yeah, like, it, it, huh, God of War is always so interesting because it's like oh, all of these realms just kind of coexist with one another. It's like, yeah. huh? That's yeah, an interesting really cool. premise. So, I quite like that. So what's what's cool though is that you never like the next God of War. I think is obviously going to stick to Norse mythology. Mm. But in 10, 15 years, when they reinvent the game again, it's like Kratos. But in Egypt, <laughs> that'd be really cool. I honestly think it's it, it's a really cool idea. Like I keep thinking of like a world where, you know, these mythologies exist. They all coexist, and it's just like how we think about countries. It's like this part of the mm. region is. This is what they believe in, and yeah, it's really cool. I think it's That's a it's a, a really idea, cool yeah. way to to think about that sort of thing. Yeah, um, but Assassin's Creed, so you're gonna play a lot good. more of that. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm I'm digging it. I don't know if I'll jump straight into Odyssey after because it might no, like be too much. Back, back to back, I think it's a bit. Too yeah, much. yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm loving the hell out of Odyssey, and maybe after Odyssey, 
I'll play a bit of Final Fantasy before <sighs> The Last please, of Us comes out. Yeah. Please do. <laughs> I will. And then we can chat of, about it. Speaking about Final Fantasy, I finished it mm. last weekend. And it's it's interesting because I, I'm not going to spend too much time on it because I know we will talk about it again when you play it. So I Hell will yeah, say will. That, that I enjoyed the shit out of the game. Like yeah. I, I really loved it. And I'll, I acknowledge like... Maybe it is because I've got such a fond love for the franchise and the original. Like there are there are a few things I acknowledge are wrong with the game, but I've, I'm ha- I happily overlook them in favor of all the positive stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you said you you encountered a bit of padding near the end that you were yeah, a bit like yeah. There's there's one part of the end, and I'm, you'll know exactly where it is when you get to it. I'm like, this is this is like completely unnecessary. Like there are bits of the game that could have just like trim down and i agree with i think it was darren who said that it, if it was 10 hours shorter like I, maybe i don't think it should have been that much shorter but there are bits i was like yeah like it's padded out but the one at the end i was like this could have a hundred percent just been cut it been been cut and like the game would have been okay mm-hmm. you know um but what i will say is that um how you say half-life uh alex it like kind of it it gives you like I, I don't know how to say it, but you've said it sort of sets the tone for future half-lives or it like yeah. redefines what future half-lives will be yeah the ending of this game is wild and it i'm dying to see part two like, i've heard a I'll lot say. of people say it's it's, interesting things about the ending yeah like i, I can <laughs> understand so my understanding is that people either hate it or love it mm. um i can get why people hate it but I, i'll just say that i'm i'm both excited and terrified to see what they do um, with part two. So yeah, just just play the game so we can talk about it. Can I think nice part little... two. Uh, I think there was a rumor going around I, that I, I won't put much stake in because I don't think a lot of it's true. But there was one part of it that I'm like, I was like, yeah, I could believe that. It was a a rumor just with a lot of Square Enix titles coming out over the next couple of years, and it listed. Final Fantasy Part 2 is only coming out in Q1 2023. And I'm like, yeah, I could believe that. Mm, yeah, that's that seems about right. I mean, these games, if if I think about how much love and detail went into this game, like mm. they can't they can't put them out every two years. Like Yeah, there's I no get, way. I'd... I get the I get the engines there, mm. but it's not as simple as just you know, spitting out assets and stringing it together, or whatever. The, like just just the soundtrack alone, for example, on Final Fantasy VII Remake, I was listening to it the whole week. It's seven discs Jeez. of music. How many and hours in total? It's about six hours, I think, with wow. the music. Wow. Okay, and the thing is, they take some, some. I mean, most of, like 90, 90 to 95% of the tracks are remixes of the original songs, but it's not mm. like one remix of a song. They're like four to five let's say different remixes of the battle theme there are three to four different remixes of the boss theme like the that the, shinra the music, theme oh my god the music alone in this game is just it's insane so i'm like they, they're obviously going to repurpose some for the second game but mm. they're still going to make new music they're still going to make yeah it's like themes for completely new regions and they yeah they need to voice act it and remember that we all know this part one is in midgar Mm-hmm. Uh, part two is when the game goes open world. Now, uh, open world. Now, I, I don't know how heavily they'll lean into that. Like, is mm. it still going to be super linear with bits of open world? Like, I don't know. But the fact of the matter uh, remains <laughs> that we're outside Midgar, and it's there's lots. There's still lots to do in this game. Yeah, Midgar I think represents it, like it, it's not like a, the original game. So like, yeah, it's not like yeah. oh, we can take Midgar now that we've created Midgar, we can just. <laughs> you know mm. reuse a lot a lot we'll of re- what <laughs> was in midgar we'll repurpose that shinra building in the middle yeah of the golden saucer like, it's no, very it different like so i i can believe like three years i wonder though i every now and then i wonder like it might be longer because <clears throat> they're moving over to new consoles who knows if they move over to longer, yeah. a new engine because this was made in unreal engine 4 and we know coming up Ooh. in news that unreal engine 5 will be out by the end of 2021 so do they migrate engines you know that incurs mm. some some work even though epic is all out there saying oh it's real easy it's never as easy as it's, the people marketing a, it say it's not a copy paste no it's not it, it's that, never so that easy um yeah the amount of times i had to roll back updates from unity just because an update would break so many things like 
Oh, shit. Yeah, it, it's never that easy. So I'm curious to see. I, I mean, I'm not saying it as a bad thing. I'm not being like, damn, Square Enix, why'd you make this ep- episodic? And Look, why is it taking so long between episodes? I'm just like, it makes sense that it would take this long. And and to be honest, when so before the game came out, it was a thing of like, okay, they're remaking Final Fantasy VII. It's the first part. Shit, if they take three years per game, three to four years per game, we are, we're only going to finish the saga in like a decade, which is still crazy to think because it might well be that. Oh, yeah. Um, but after having played the first part, you you soon <clears throat> realize that it's it's not just like a little side thing. It's not like a DLC. It's a fully fledged game and you need to see it as like it's its own entity. If, if mm. You almost need to forget that the original exists. Like mm. I know that sounds silly, but this is its own game the first part of a franchise so like if you look at it like that it, i can 100 percent get behind like i don't mind waiting this game was really good i'll happily wait for this yeah I, I i think you you hit the nail on the head there it's like if you didn't know that final fantasy 7 e- existed and knew where the story was going you could definitely see this as a you know a first part in a trilogy of games just mm. like Final Fantasy 13 happened or yeah. um, the Assassin's Creed Ezio saga was split over three games. Like, it's the same thing. Mm. It's just yeah. going to take longer between entries because they yeah. are wildly different in scope. Mm. Yeah. So, r- real good. Finish Origins and play it so we can talk about it because... Sweet. It's good. I, and just on that, I'm playing it again on hard now. And mm. Holy shit! In hard mode, you you can't use items. That's crazy. And benches do not regenerate your mana. So what? Hmm. So how, wait, how do you get mana back if you can't use items? Um. So if you did, you play the demo. I yeah. think you did. Do you remember you hit those boxes, scatter around, and it, re, it like replenishes your mana? It says like you picked up a Mako Mako sh- Ma- Ma- Marco shard, and it replenishes your mana. Uh. So you kind of have to rely on those. Um, that's yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what's interesting is that it's not just a thing of um bosses aren't just say i've only played like an hour and a half let's say um so a little little past what you played in the demo on hard and it's not a thing of like okay enemies now have more health hmm. that scorpion boss had um it had like different moves oh uh, cool that's so <clears throat> it's like, and uh, Umar on Twitter has told me that bosses have different movesets. So it forces you to, it's not like, a, oh, I know this boss is going to do this. This is how I'm going to react. It's like, okay, what's this boss going to do? How do I equip accordingly? Because now with more health and whatnot, you really have to pay attention to what your loadout is. Are you taking advantage of weaknesses? Are you staggering the boss? Like it's a lot more involved, which I'm very excited to get into. Because the on normal, the game I found was, was like relatively challenging, but I didn't die mm. often. I might have died once or twice, mm-hmm. but still very satisfying. But now I'm I'm keen to like really delve into the nitty gritty of the system they've put together, which like is cool. Actually, uh, I mean, if if their combat system to, has that depth, that's awesome. Yeah, like actually paying mind to shit. I should be using Barrett more in this instance or mm. Tifa because X Y Z. So yeah. That's awesome. It's a good I, time. I'm glad that it has that depth because, like, mm. a lot of games, like you'll put it on hard, you'll be like, Mm-mm. "This just, is just doesn't, yeah, doesn't this is just punishing." Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, game, what else? Game is good. You've been playing I more played, of that forest. Uh, oh my god, I played more of the forest this week. I have a wild Luna walking back and forth on the table, so just excuse her. <laughs> playing, playing more forest multiplayer. Um, that that game is a lot of fun. Mm. Like, I've I'm really enjoying playing it and. I need to make the time to do a solo run because I know it's going to be a different experience, but shit, there's something about playing it with friends and just asking around that I'm having a great time. Although so I, I need to I need to edit a video together because something interesting happened on my stream where we got hacked. Uh, okay, um, you're not talking about which, the bird thing. Hey? You're not talking about the bird thing. Mm-mm. No. Because that bird thing, oh, so, oh, that so killed Twitter, me. Yeah, that, oh my God, so, so funny. For those of you that didn't see it, birds, birds <clears throat> just flew into a fire and flew out. It was the most mind-blowing glitch I've seen in my life. <laughs> it was so and funny. We actually, we actually got hacked in the forest, which is something I never knew could happen. Where somebody joined our server and griefed us and just left. Huh. Um, so what, what they did, they, they joined the server. Mm-hmm. Um, they were flying in the air, dropping. That's not terrifying dozen- at all. 
dozens of bombs, uh, playing music over the audio and typing uh, derogatory terms in chats, which is why I have to edit it because I want to obviously bleep out and uh, hide the chat. But I just want people to see like, what a weird thing to happen. Like, I did why would not you... know that was possible. I also, we, I, I don't know how it happened. To be completely honest, I have no idea how this person joined our server and they only left because our host banned them. But how did they join in the first place? Like, I've not. Yeah, that's um, crazy. I'm I mean, just I thinking just of like a, a creepy guy like flying over and it, dropping shit on you. That's weird. I watched the footage, but honestly, I was I was like shell shocked. I was like, I can't believe that happened. Jesus. I was like, what the shit just happened? Yeah, no, that um, would freak I, me the hell out. So I, ju- I just want to share it because it's like, you, you won't believe you like how did this happen and why do people do this yeah like it's the most yeah. ridiculous what thing. joy did he get out of doing that well i don't know because then we got back to our base that had been destroyed as well oh like, no you son of a bitch like thank, oh, thanks a no. lot you know so yeah it was, it was wild but aside from that we had a lot of fun in the frost have like, you have you now established usual. like your base properly you got traps and shit uh, we we did before it was destroyed, so we've mm. we started building a new one. But we've made some good progress. We've got like um, we've got the the scuba gear. We've got the the climbing axe. We've mm-hmm. got uh, what else is important? We've got like some of those good quest items that let us progress into more areas. You've and picked up some of those to... like hidden videos and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've picked up bits and pieces, and we just need to. You know, I know there's like that snow mountain that you can eventually go mm-hmm. up to need to make gear mm-hmm. to go up there. Um, and now we've got, we only recently got the climbing axe, so there's other bits. It opens uh, up things, yeah. Yeah, that we need to explore. So. Have you have you gone down the hill on a tortoise shell yet? No, but we did it's find fun. this. I don't know if you knew this, but one of the guys I'm playing with knew there was a hidden cave in the ocean somewhere. And if you go down, you basically find a recipe for what looks like a roller coaster. Oh what? It, like so, it's I say roller coaster. It's not like you actually getting in a in a cart and going down it, but you can build as far as I understand, like a ramp, like a ski ramp. That is cool. It, and you can ride down that with a shell. <laughs> there should be a trap where it like knocks a, knocks a cannibal into a shell and propels them down a ramp oh and like into a fire or something. We'll, we'll look into <clears> that. Well, we did last thing we did before we ended the stream on Thursday. We. We set up some fuffy slides. Ooh, <laughs> some nice zip so lines. We, yeah, we built we built um, a base like out in the ocean near the boat. Okay, like not not too far out. We we built a base and we, we had zip lines going there and back. Are you saying the really forest fun. is a strand game? It's a strand. Uh, that was my first thoughts. I was like, this makes me think so much of Death Stranding and how satisfying those zip lines were. Yo, those zip lines are amazing. Yeah, real good. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm loving the heart of that game, and I, I anticipate playing it a lot more, especially with, like we know there's apart from the Last of Us Two and Ghost of Tsushima, and like a handful mm. of other bits and pieces, we know that there's going to be a drought of yeah, like yeah. new releases. So it's it's a good time to <coughs> dig into backlogs and just play stuff that we have. How satisfying is it when you you hear like a <clears throat> sorry a big like cannibal roving party coming to your camp and then they just trigger all your traps all I, the traps it's so yeah, good we, we we had a ton of traps um i, I need to play this game alone at some stage because yeah. i know it'll be Alo- alone is, is fun because i distinctly remember like being in my little village with my walls and like all my traps are outside and it's dark and i'm just hearing them like go off and doop 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 they're just hitting <laughs> and then i walk outside i'm like so many bodies and i can take the bodies and use the meat to eat or whatever and every now and then i'd go out and there'd be one of those leader zombies who's just chilling there waiting for me and i'm just like fuck (laughs) like oh shit yeah i gotta get out of here did you did you eat the cannibals hell yeah you became you became a cannibal yourself didn't you lose sanity yeah so much sanity oh my god so why are you like this why don't you just go hunt some good deer or i did i used to catch little (laughs) rabbits and stuff like that it was a good time tortoise meat is uh, Mm. abundance in our game holy hell tortoise meat is good i don't know how you cook tortoise like i don't know either but you gotta you gotta keep this conversation away from lenska she's gonna think you're gonna eat your tortoises outside (laughs) but that's that's one part of the game where it's like sorry i've got to eat you (laughs) yeah i'm real sorry i'm on an island and i'm dying yeah but but the thing is like the the deer run the rabbits run so you kind of have to work hard the tortoise is just like yeah shame shame sorry sorry my friend (laughs) 
Um, to, to some of those camps are day, messed up. Like beach. when you see those bodies like contorted with like mm. um, tennis tennis rackets and because so, apparently there was a tennis team on the flight with you. So I don't know how There's many some, there are, but man, there are a lot of tennis rackets with contorted bodies around yeah. them. I must have <laughs> a lot of a lot of the reason I want to play solo as well as to get um get like really get a feel for the story. Because mm. a lot of that stuff we kind of glaze over in multiplayer. It's like, oh here's a here's like a quest item. Yeah, I look at a photo, I'm like, oh, it means nothing to me and I carry on with my mm. like just moving through the cave, whatever. Oh, here's, here's a drawing from uh, Timmy. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the underpinning like... mystery to the forest is super yeah. fucked up and weird, and it's great. Yeah. yeah. So I need to play it solo at some stage. Sweet. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Mm. Um, more people time. should play the forest. It's even on consoles. Yeah. So you have an excuse. It's, it's a good time. Um, good, good, good time. Let me open up my browser and get those uh, good, good release dates up. Do we have um, release dates? I think we do, actually. Goddamn. I remember there was stuff coming out near the end of the month, but that might only be next week. But let's see. Next week. Let's see. We're looking at releases, game releases, that is, from June 16th to June... I mean, sorry, May. We're in May. May 16th. <laughs> May. My God. Um, My God. Imagine the calendar would come up. It just disappears. There we go. May 16th to May... 22nd um there's some games good lord so hit me with the games may 19th so this coming week we've got the wonderful 101 remastered coming to pc ps4 and nintendo switch did you ever play this Hmm. on wii u nope neither never did but i've seen some polarizing reviews i think ign gave it a nine and gamespot gave it a four wow Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> don't know. That's that's polarizing. Oh shit! Yeah, I have that's, a feeling it's going to be a case of you played this on Wii and you're really nostalgic for it, or you're playing it for the first time and wondering why the hell people what yeah why are people so into this yeah exactly. I 100 percent think it's one of those cases. So anyway, that's mm. out. Um, May twentieth, a game on PC called Crucible. Not mm-hmm. sure what that is from Destiny. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, on May 22nd on PC, PS4 and Xbox One we've got a game called Man Eater and if I'm not mistaken that's a shark game uh, it sounds about right it's Man made Eater by made, made by Nelly Furtado S- so <laughs> that's fuck that's the first thing that came up when I googled it crap <laughs> uh, it, is, a it is experience the ultimate power fantasy as the apex predator of the seas a terrifying shark shark is in all caps don't know why uh, Man Eater is a single player open world action RPG. Oh my god. In brackets after RPG, they've got Shark PG. I hate this. I hate everything about <laughs> I hate this so game. much about it. Um, so Why? that's out. Um, and because of that terrible pun, I will never play it. Never. <laughs> but yeah, that looks cool. Um, just a quick PSA Sharks hardly kill anyone. You should not kill sharks. Um, it's fine that this game exists, but I hate it when sharks are vilified. So, yeah. Anyway, I go di- I go diving yeah, a lot, spiders. so <laughs> it's like yeah. You go diving a lot, damn. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, the last game. Yeah, yeah. What? No, I was gonna say what? What else we have? Last game out this week: Saints Row the Third Remastered for PC, PS4, Xbox One. Now, funny thing, this is the only Saints Row I've actually played. Is the third one, and I remember liking it a lot because it was stupid and fun. What the hell is the censor? Sa- Saints is Row. Like a... Oh, Saints Row. Yeah. I thought she had the censor. I was like, no. <laughs> no, Saint- Saints Row is good. Saints Saint- Row 3 was fun. Yeah, Saints Row 3 was... I remember it being a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, but it's the only mm-hmm. one I've ever played. So... Oh, so Saints Row 4 was when they went all superhero, and that was also a lot of fun. Oh, uh, I've heard that that one was cool, because you could like... Mm. It, it was like a crackdown. It was basically crackdown. Oh, that sounds, that sounds fun. Crackdown, man! I just remember oh. that Crackdown Three came out last year, and it was so, so bad. So bad. Saint Sancho is highly underrated. I feel like, look, it's no, it's no Grand Theft Auto, but if you can appreciate it as like Grand Theft Auto Light, mm. I could say that, mm. but with way more tongue in tongue in cheek Cuba and like bizarre shit, then you're in for a good time. I remember liking the weapons a lot because the weapons were like so yeah. outlandish and really fun. Mm. But even shit, even that story and how things played was it's so weird, but it was a lot of fun. 
Like I remember playing that. It's a good game. Saints Row. So yeah, that's okay. remastered and coming. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's already out on Switch. I remember it being out on Switch. I think it might be on Switch, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, we should get to games news. Some there news. was a fuck ton news. of news this week. There's a lot of news this week. Who would have thunk? Who would have thunk? What do you want to start with? Um, should we start with... Unreal Engine 5. Engine? Let's let's okay, do that let's one. Okay, start with that one. So... <laughs> <clears throat> that was a uh, one of the bigger reveals of the week because it just feels like every day is now trying to be a mini E3. Um, so mm. basically, uh, Jeff Keighley and Tim Sweeney from Epic um, revealed this new playable demo uh, that's running on Unreal Engine 5 and that was running on PlayStation 5 hardware. Um, mm. And it's it's kind of amazing. It's got like incredibly detailed um models and um support for some amazing lighting effects like uh dynamic global illumin- illumination um it also makes use of the ps5's ssd like you saw at the end there where the character was mm. like flying through the air and all that shit was happening like buildings were falling over and crumbling and mm. um there's a lot of stuff happening in that demo that is basically an advert for why we need these new consoles. Um, mm. And then it it was almost like Sony, like, offhandedly were like, hey, check out our console without actually mm. saying it. Because Epic was like, yeah, we couldn't have done this demo without the PS5 or this is only running on the PS5. We haven't run it on the Series X yet. So it was a good advert for PS5 that as well. Was, that was a real good marketing move. I don't know, I don't know who approached who first. Mm. But can I tell you, so we spoke about how disappointing Xbox's showcase was last week because it was like the first look at next-gen gaming and it was like hardly a first look at next-gen yeah. gaming. Yeah. Um, but then this this out of nowhere, it's like, okay, we're going to, like we didn't know it was going to be Unreal Engine 5. We knew it was going to be some big announcements. Mm-hmm. But it's like, hey, here's Unreal Engine 5 running on PlayStation. But that whole conversation, like did you, if you watch the whole interview, um shit it is just like like a punting playstation yeah. sneakily the whole time and even in, in the demo when it's like push x like push x to jump or whatever it said like they had the, the x button there it was like this very clever marketing move from sony so like i said i don't know if it was um like money changed hands mm-hmm. or if epic approach sony or vice versa but shit it sony came out looking real good because it's like with, like you said without even saying a thing it's like Here's our new PlayStation. Here's yeah. what next gen looks like. And it's not even at a Sony event. So the, it, it it really yeah. just showed how quickly the conversation can flip. Like mm. I, I mean, prior to this, it was like, okay, Xbox is being super, super transparent about the next gen plans. Okay, their reveal wasn't super, you know, interesting, but um at least they are showing stuff. And like in mm. a matter of one hour, essentially, it it had flipped from Oh flipped, my god, yeah. Sony has made the, the better choice with this SSD and stuff like that. <laughs> and like I don't know, like we we don't know how that thing will how that will shake out because there are so many previous instances where you look back at the PS3 and everyone was touting the cell processor as this mm. revolutionary thing until developers actually started working with it and it was a nightmare. And the same thing happened yeah. with the Xbox One where it had this really weird approach to um, system memory, uh, uh, like RAM. It used, um, what mm. was it, EMC RAM, like this little cache. And, you know, Microsoft were convinced that it was a better better choice than just traditional RAM, and it en- ended up working actually against them. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, these things shake so- out over the course of a generation. And mm. I think the Unreal Engine 5 demo was a really good showcase of why both consoles need SSDs because mm. you really cannot produce what was happening in that demo without one. Um, yeah. And from that aspect, it was cool. I also think there were a lot of features in that demo that were directly aimed at game developers. I know I was chatting mm. to um, uh, Neelan, friend of the show who works at Naughty mm. Dog, um, just about you know what he thought of the demo because you know he's far more in tune with yeah. some of the technologies on offer there. And he brought up a really interesting point about the um, the dynamic global illu- illumination. So 
what that is essentially is like when you look at a scene in a game and you see how the light propagates through it, um, mm. that is like global, global illumination, how um, something is lit up based on where a light source is. And all of that is pre-baked mm. because it takes a lot of resources to ray trace that, to that stuff. Yeah, yeah. They, He was actually telling me the, the process of baking that light in uses ray tracing and they you know can take hours to to um pre-bake a scene where it just calculates all these things using ray traces Mm. and then like keeps it there statically so for it to be Mm. happening in real time is a big deal um Mm. i know they they didn't mention ray tracing much in the demo but essentially that's what it is Um, yeah very very optimized very intense ray tracing i know Metro mm. Exodus actually has a form of ray trace global illumination, but if you run the game at 1080p on a 2080 Ti, you'll be lucky to get over 20 frames per second with that setting turned on. Really? Yeah, really it's sure. it's it's not it's not for current hardware. It's just mm. it needs future hardware. It needs engines that support it correctly. Um, yeah. So that that is a big thing, and um, I think lighting to me. Lighting has always been what separates uh, generations in games because that, to me, is mm-hmm. where I see, from my eye, a big difference. Like, oh, the lighting in this game mm-hmm. is stunning, uh, as yeah. opposed to a previous gen game. As opposed, as opposed to like this game is using eight K textures versus four K. Mm. I think that change is less tangible. So, yeah, it's really cool. It's demo, really though. cool. There's a lot of things in the pipeline there for developers that seem really cool, like. Being able to import models straight from ZBrush, um, I know that is a big thing for certain people's pipelines. Um, Mm -hmm. And I really think it's only when, I mean, the engine's only going into like a preview at the start of 2021 and is only out properly at the end of 2021. So I don't think we're going to see games using Unreal Engine 5 till at least 2022. Um, Mm. I know Microsoft, Phil Spencer said a lot of the studios are, are using will use Unreal Engine 5 because a lot of them use Unreal Engine 4 at the moment. So, mm. yeah. Well, what was funny What was funny was that whole, um, just back on the, the fact that like Sony stole the conversation. I mean, not just Sony, obviously Unreal and Epic. Mm. Um, but the fact that of the matter is that people must remember Unreal Engine 5 will work on PC and Xbox yeah. as well. And like it's not this PS exclusive thing, but people all of a sudden like, wow, PS5, amazing. Like, I get it. PS5's got the SSD. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, uh, Tim Sweeney said that the SSD is, like, beyond what PCs have. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's at the moment. That's a, And, that, and so, that, that's going to change really soon as well because um, motherboards are now coming out with support for PCIe 4 and there are already SSDs that make use of PCIe 4. And when those start hitting the mainstream, those things are going to be, f- mm. like, flying fast. So it's it's so funny that I'd, I'd never have thought that the next gen would be dominated by SSD talk, like yeah. your hard drive speed. <laughs> I mean, so, Sony themselves are hoping that SSDs catch up because like they themselves have said, we are going to earmark certain SSDs on the market that will match mm. the speed of our internal ones so you can expand your storage. So it's not like they're saying no one can replicate what we are doing with our mm. SSDs. It's just a different approach. Um, yeah. at least from the outset and who knows if, if it ends up being like their SSD is the reason that um, their console is so expensive you know maybe it's a bet that they regret taking uh, two mm. years down the line it's all these things shake out in completely different ways and I think we get yeah. caught up in the conversations online and we forget that yes a lot of people who play games are expressing their opinions online but the mainstream audience that you know makes up the 110 million ps4 consoles that sony reported this week they aren't the ones going on 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 twitter and picking apart every Mm. single little speck of the console they're the people who are buying a console maybe have three games and buy fifa call of duty every year they don't give a shit Mm. about anything else about anything else yeah think about that that what um, they do care about is how much this thing costs when it launches you know yeah i don't know it's i'm dying to know what like, because I mean, also in news, I suppose there there've been rumors that Sony's going to unveil the PS5 in June. Yeah, uh, I think it's June the fourth. I've seen that a um, lot, yeah, as well. So, like, I hope so. I'd like to see what the PS5 actually looks like. And Same. How much it costs. Yeah, I I think someone's going to pull the trigger on that cost conversation. 
Yeah, because think about um, Series X. We've known what it looks like since December now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it was December. Sony are just being awfully quiet. Like, but it's so weird. Like we, we uh, I've already mentioned, we had Mark Cerny coming and giving out like this this big, like super nerdy talk about the the tech, which is cool because you know he's being very transparent about the technology they're working on. Mm-hmm. But in terms of everything else, we don't know anything. But then. This week, it's like, oh, yeah, this is what the gameplay could look like. Yeah. Or will look like, whatever it is. I, so. I think it was just a perfect storm. It, Like you said, it was a combination of people being a bit burned by Microsoft's conference and then this mm. being like, oh, this is actual gameplay. Even though it's a tech demo, you know, Epic saying, yeah, we, we play this with a controller is like a big but deal, you know. What, what sealed the deal, honestly, is because I've watched over the years many a tech demo and it usually is like a cinematic or... You know what I mean? Like mm. it usually feels more cinematic. Everyone remembers that Unreal Three Engine one in that like cyberpunky yeah. Like, world. Yeah, but you know what I mean. You you'd look at it, you never think like, oh, this is a game I can play. You're like, yeah, cool. That this is a really nice cinematic. Whereas to me, this this um, demo really it was it it was it was a playable demo. Yeah, there were there were moments in the demo where it prompted the player to push x so i think that's why people were like losing their mind over like oh my god this is an actual game i think people were also super like hey i actually want this to be a game it looks kind of fun yeah i know i know (coughs) so we we were busy uh chatting in scuff at work while we were all watching and i I know noelle was particularly like holy shit this looks like a futuristic tomb raider i need in my life yeah she was super super sad that it wasn't like an actual game that they're working on Um, yeah yeah because i mean it's got all the the trappings of like a horizon Mm. zero dawn or a a tomb raider it looked really impressive so i'm glad Uh, that we are getting to that point horizon zero dawn (coughs) looks like that hmm I'd be oh, pretty yeah. pretty chuffed. Oh yeah. I <laughs> imagine, if if Sony is revealing the PlayStation on June fourth, I would suspect Horizon Zero Dawn two is a big headline thing that they want to show off. Mm. In Unreal Engine five. Oh my god. Twenty twenty two. Um Shut imagine. So other news for the week. We got news of Tony Hawk being remastered. Tony Hawk Pro Skater one and two. Hot damn. That that <clears throat> that was that was funny though. On Twitter, I think it was Nibble and Wario sixty four. Like, yo, we just got a message from from Tony Hawk. Like, did you see that tweet? Yeah, yep. it, it was, it, like it was just SMS like he, he like, sent out like a blast SMS or something. Uh, I'm like, how did Tony Hawk get your number? For st- he also <laughs> for st- like he uh, he like broke the embargo on his own. Like, I knew it was happening because we we had an embargo. We had news stories ready for six p.m. local time. Yeah. Mm. And then that SMS goes out like half an hour before. And it's just like, but what the fuck? It is funny though, because it is like, uh, why would you do that? And I honestly thought like, it's an SMS, like this isn't news. But then it was like, yo, uh, Jeff Keighley's <clears throat> like, I've got Tony Hawk. And um, I can't remember her name. The the the, the person from, who's the studio doing it? Uh, Vicarious Visions. Blank now. Vicarious Visions, yeah. Talking to them. It's like, oh yeah, here's Tony Hawk. One and two, my remastered. God. It, remastered's such a weird word for this because it's one hundred percent a remake. Like it's a remake. It's a it's it's a ground up remake, and it looks like the the side by side shots that they had in the trailer were just mind blowing. Like unbelievable mm. how good it looks. But also like you got to remember Tony Hawk Pro Skater Two is, I think the second or third highest rated game on Metacritic of all time. Yeah, it's sitting there with like a ninety seven so or something. To think about. Like those games are good. Lord. Those games are they really are good. good. I, I played. I played. I never was two or three, but I played a lot of Tony Hawk on PS One years ago as well. It's um, your. I I like that. And and if you, I, I've read a few um, articles that dig deep into like some of the details in there. You know, they're bringing things like revert, which is you know switching your stance. Um, was only introduced in Tony Hawk Pro Skater Three, but they're bringing it into mm. this one. So. You know, they, yeah. they're adding the little flares that entries afterwards added into the fan favorite uh, maps and areas of one and two, like the schoolyard and the the warehouse and stuff like that. With with multiplayer. With multiplayer, <laughs> yeah. Um, Can you imagine? It's like, hey, yo, I'll see you at the warehouse for for some skating. My God, later. and you just like chill around with friends whatever i think the wow. the release date's like september if i'm not mistaken yeah it's not far it's really not far yeah. we had there were actually some some like shadow drops this week um with announcements and release dates i mean even 
um, to bounce it quickly, there's a new, um, is it Paper Mario? Oh, yes, the Nintendo announcement. New new Paper Mario, like, announced in the releases. July. Months away. Yeah. <laughs> it's like and it just came out of nowhere. It wasn't even, like, a direct or anything. It was no. just, like, here's this trailer. Here's the trailer. Yeah, and the trailer was weird. Like, the game looks cool, but it was a very weird, weirdly put together trailer. Mm. Did you, have opinion. you ever played a Paper Mario? I, I played, I don't, don't remember which one it was, but I played one on the Wii. Okay. It's a good time. Are they they really more RPG good, so. focused, eh? They are, yeah, they are more RPG focused, but I don't know how this one's going to work because all we've seen, there's like one screenshot or bit of gameplay going around where it looks like Mario's on like this circular board oh like that's that combat thing on. yeah it, it looked I very confusing thing. Like, I, I don't know how to work but it looks like it's it's changing the combat okay. somehow i think the so i don't remember i that, think the so. only one i played was a crossover one with like mario it, it was i think mario and luigi and then paper mario it was like some crossover on 3ds and i remember uh, enjoying that that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, look, the Paper Mario is usually a good time, so... I do like the yeah. whole origami theme. Um, That's very good. It makes me think of Tearaway. It, yeah, 100%. Love, lovely aesthetic, uh, aesthetic, and it it's just like it pops, and it's so different. Also, is Princess really Peach cool. the bad guy now? Yeah, it seems like Yeah, it. origami Princess Peach is the bad guy. Her time to shine. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I hate you. Yeah. I want to marry you ever. I want to fold you. <laughs> Joining forces with Bowser. Yeah, with, with origami <laughs> Bowser. Origami Bowser. Um, um, what else no, happened this week? This week. Uh, we had a big showing by Sony for Ghost of Tsushima. Um, I actually haven't watched that yet. Oh, haven't you? Good? Yeah, I uh, mm. I really liked it. You know, it was kind of weird. I don't know why, but I don't think this is a, a sentiment that's unique to me. But I thought that game was going to be different to what they showed. Um, the sense I got from it was like, this is a very, I don't want to say by the numbers or standard because I don't really know how it plays, but this is a open world game, how you expect it to be. Um, mm. and it's got lots and lots of, uh, familiarities to not familiarities, similarities to mm. Assassin's Creed. Um, mm. very much like, uh, so they showed off two two combat styles, which they called honorable and dishonorable, which I thought was funny. Um, <laughs> but basically honorable is like actually fighting your opponents, not like sneaking around and stabbing them. Mm. And the combat there looks crazy. It's like, it it's about like getting that one swipe on your opponent, um, like a samurai movie. You know, you're not hacking mm. away at this person until they fall down. It's like, timing the right stroke and taking them down with one hit and it looks super stylish and awesome um and then the dishonorable way basically played like an assassin's creed of old it's like sneaking around doing assassinations from everywhere um so i was a bit surprised to i don't know like watch that and be like oh this reminds me of x y and z but at the same time the setting is like absolutely gorgeous um the the music is beautiful um and i'm i'm just really excited even if it is a familiar experience you know if sucker punch is taking all their open world ideas and just giving it a new setting i'm there for it because i think it's awesome the one thing i didn't like was the ui i thought the ui was super shit um it just doesn't look good i don't think Mm. and it's really obtrusive like when you bring up uh i think it was like a weapon wheel or something it takes up like so much of the screen um Uh, so i hope you can you know, pare that down a little bit and because man, it, compared to how beautiful the rest of the game was, the UI just stuck out like a sore thumb. It just mm. did not appeal to me at all. Maybe this <clears> is the <throat> Assassin's Creed Japan game that everyone's been wanting. Yeah. This l- yeah, literally, I mean. like, everyone is like, huh, Ubisoft doesn't need to make Assassin's Creed Japan anymore. I saw a lot of that sentiment no, going tough. around on, on Twitter. Yeah. Um, That's funny. So I, I would recommend watching it. It's like 18 minutes, but it's. Mm. It's kind of awesome. No, I need to watch it. I need to watch it. Really? And that's coming out July, middle of July. Oh, that's also not not so far. I Next think it's month. actually the same day Wait as Paper minute. Mario. It's 17th of July. Oh, it is. No. I, I remember seeing there was, there was a joke about that on Twitter as well. Yeah. Choose your hero. Um, <laughs> choose your hero. What other news was there? Um, I know um, Warner Brothers Montreal, the people who are apparently making another Batman game 
have basically said to chill mm. the fuck out, which is yeah. annoying because they they tease their game and then just went yeah. silent and now people are like, what the hell? And they're like, no, just relax. Mm. I mean, and when last did they release a the game? Uh, their last game was Batman Arkham Origins. Yeah. Which long ago. Very, very, very long time ago. Yeah. So, so they are definitely working yeah. on a Batman while Rocksteady does something else. Um, but like, I don't understand why they would tease it and then just go silent for six months and then like, mm. kind of like slap fans over their hands being like, just relax. Just, just, just yeah. chill out. Um, so yeah, I don't, just don't tease your games then. Like, I don't understand. No, don't set expectations and then be upset when people have expectations. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you've got to, you've got to monitor that stuff. Um, it's speaking. Like, hey, this game's coming. Hey, calm down. Ex- okay, this game's in development. <laughs> but speaking of the same thing, it's like, um, this week, uh, Pete Hines, who is the vice, oh, yeah. vice president of marketing at Bethesda was basically like, don't expect Skyrim 6 news for at least a couple of years. And it's like, well, why the fuck did you guys you put that stinger image two years ago in your E3 you conference? Goddamn JPEG with the logo. You didn't <laughs> have to. I, so basically he said that um, he was replying to a fan on Twitter. He was like, uh, Elder Scrolls 6 comes after Starfield. Um, and, they, you know, we hardly even know what Starfield is about yet. So... There's like years still, still between <laughs> us and, you know, well, them announcing anything to do with uh, Elder Scrolls 6. So. But even Starfield's been like making the moves around like, discussions around it for years now. And how can he say like, we don't even know what it is yet. Like, holy shit. There's so, like, there's so many rumors that that thing's just going to be shadow dropped this year. And I'm just like, I don't think so, guys. I like, don't know. Maybe, but I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. And anyway, I just don't understand why they felt the need to show that at an E three in twenty eighteen if like the at this rate the best expectation is to start hearing about it again in like twenty twenty two. Like the hell's going yeah. on. So um, Mortal Ridiculous. Kombat eleven. It's getting more story content. New, new stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. It's got a it. got a Robocop uh <sighs> character now which is cool i love Mortal Kombat purely for the fact that i can just pull out like the most unexpected action heroes and pull them straight into their game and and, and it works the gameplay the gameplay trailer was amazing because it's like it had robocop fighting the terminator it's like what is yeah. this game this is like, amazing this is a timeline i want to see yeah <laughs> um so basically um, the the expansion which comes out next week or the week after 26th of may Features Robocop, Shiva, and Fujin, who is um, Raiden's brother, um, mm-hmm. and it's going to have story content. So it's going to continue the story of Mortal Kombat 11. So mm. that's cool. Which, which is quite simple because I, I can't remember how that game ended. But I was like, damn, how did they? Oh man, how did they take this? That game over? ended <laughs> with the most like we are literally wiping the slate clean, like oh, okay. way they could have done yeah. it. Yeah. <clears throat> Also, in, in in other news, another another surprise announcement. Uh, ma- all the is it a mafia trilogy getting yes. remastered? <coughs> Which Sorry, is I'm like, coughing so much today. Um, it's all these cranes, man. Yeah, they they again like teased it. It's like the full announcement mm-hmm. is coming on the nineteenth of May, but a lot of it's leaked already. So yeah, the the thing that struck me is so it seems like the first mafia is getting a remake. Um like a full-on remake, while 2 and 3 are just getting up remasters. But the remake of the original Mafia looks beautiful. Mm. Like, have you seen those those screenshots? I haven't seen yet, no. Oh, my goodness. They they just really, they look like something out of next gen. It's like so really is, stunning. Is it, a, is it a proper remake? Or is it Apparently, like the first one is remake? being properly remade, like from the ground up. See, pe- people will complain about these remakes but can mm. i tell you that i i'm i'm down for this this trend of remakes because so far i've been very spoiled with the remakes i've had mm. uh, between final fantasy 7 remake and the resident evil is like both games from my childhood i loved so i'm like cool but i get to relive them again like in, in a new new aesthetic and with new mechanics like by all means like it's all good exactly <laughs> like keep doing it i don't mind i'm i'm 100 percent there with you it's like even mm. you know, even if it's games like I never played the original Mafia, so it's now 
Like, cool, mm. I'll play it in yeah, a remake sense, which is awesome. Yeah. So, that's okay, cool. Well, what are, what are the news? I think that's all the big things. It. Yeah, there was a lot this yeah. week, but that's like mm. the broad strokes of it. Um, should we get to questions? Questions. Do if you, you questions? want to send us questions, you can email us on checkpointchatpodcast at gmail.com. You can also hit us up on the social media at Checkpoint Chat on Instagram, on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, everywhere. Maddie puts out questions as well. And I do sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't <clears throat> for so, I, I know there's nothing on I know we got lots of emails of, because so, so I was getting I them during my run okay. this morning. Okay. Just checking. So when I last checked the email there weren't any, but let Yo. me just pull them open quickly. There are emails from, now. Oh, is it from good good guy Megs? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a lot of emails. Okay, um, t -t 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 question one through nine. Ooh, okay, we've got nine questions to get through, and we we okay with time. We've got twelve minutes to do this. So okay, with okay. the curfew in place, which starts at eight and ends at five, it is very quiet. Uh, is it very quiet in your area? By me, it's very spooky quiet. Even though I live fairly close to the Joburg CBD, it's quite refreshing. Hmm. Um, weirdly enough, it's it's quiet, but we can hear cars like racing. Yeah, same. Which is just very why it's such a weird thing. It's like, is it because the roads are quiet? They're just speed. It just uh, they they, they want to live their or? best um, Fast and Furious lifestyle. You do live in Benoni, though. Mm. We all know that Dominic Fast Toretto Furious, came from Benoni. Benoni is all about family. Yeah, and that, <laughs> that's where that's where the, all the cars race. But even by us, there, there are cars that just scream down the road. You can hear it because it's so quiet. I suppose you can hear it from like a mile away. Mm, mm. Um, yeah, I have noticed but, uh, that yeah, the roads around me have become busier lately. They, I feel like people are just are not lot, giving a shit lot anymore. Busier now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Even by us on the morning runs we've had during the week, Lenska said like it looks like things are back mm. to normal. It's not quite the same level of traffic, but there's a lot of traffic. Speaking of which, which have is, you ordered your case swizzle yet? <clears throat> Not yet. We've actually, the only takeaway we've had was Rocker Mamas. How good was it we've, though? We've actually been, oh, it was so good. <laughs> um, we've had some Seattle coffee though, which has been Ooh. cool. Um, but yeah, we, we've been sticking to cooking meals and that. Like, it's funny because at the moment we hit level four, it's like, oh, when you get McDonald's mm. and this and that, and we just never did. I Part See, I did. And then I was like, wow, I survived a month without this and I actually feel kind of good about it. So I'm going to try yeah. stick to it. <coughs> yeah, Rocker Mamas was pretty good. good um, Na good Nando's, time. I've had Nando's like once or twice. <gasps> Nando's is Ooh, that's the OG. I love my Nando's. Goddamn. So the Portuguese roots shining through. I the... found out the other day that there's Nando's in the United States. Did not know that. I think I knew there was news. And I know there's a couple in the UK. I know in the you UK, know know, yeah. You know how I know there's in the US? Because I've, I've had video chats with Gareth while he walks to uh, <laughs> okay <laughs> oh, i'm sure he's so happy that it's there yeah he, he loves he loves some good nandos okay question two alessandro were you first pumping in the air when you got credited by austin walker on waypoint radio for a very recent what? game review you did on game spots i did waypoint radio huh we go go find that what what is your review maybe was it was it fallout one maybe i don't I, know i said I, for, I forgot what the game was but it came out this week Austin pronounced your surname as if you were a Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> How often do people butcher your surnames, Matthew and Alessandro? I need a. I I, uh, I haven't listened to Waypoint Radio in a long time, but that's pretty cool. Um, mm. I'm a huge admirer of Austin Walker and the work he does, so that's that's cool. Go go time stamp it and share. Yeah, it. I would I would honestly it. love to know which episode that was on because that would make me hunting it down a lot easier um so yeah he said it was this week but i don't know if it's is it one a week or? it's generally one a week yeah but i wonder what yeah. review because the last review i did was predator and that was like that two weeks ago predator and fallout were last mm. i do know that yeah. vice loved fallout 76 so i know <laughs> Um, but I mean, um, Vice is, uh, I mean, a review is one person. It's not a unanimous yeah. thing. So oh, can't believe Vice is an entity likes for like. Yeah. Can't <laughs> believe there's a, every, every website is a hive mind oh. where everyone shares the same oh, game opinions. Shit. Wow. Yeah. 
hyphen do people butcher surnames uh, all the time? Very often, yeah. I, I must, especially I must yours. I think school. yours is harder to pronounce than mine. It's you know what it is. It's because there's like a U in my mm. surname. So a lot of people say F- Figuera. Oh God! Instead of just instead of just Figuera, you know. Does anyone go Figueroa? I've had Figaro as well. That's like yeah, that street. That's it. That street in LA, just by the E3 thing, is. Oh, uh, Figaro. Yeah, there's yeah. even the hotel, the Hotel Fig. Hotel Fig. I, it's owned by me, my family. Yeah, it's where all Did the I Indies stay. <laughs> yeah, because because I, I mean, traditionally your surname is like Figuera. It's you need that that rrr, you need that in there, mm. and it's just people don't have that. Or you can do it in Portuguese, the f- Figueira. 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 Which, fun fact, if I've never said it before, is literally Portuguese for fig tree. Oh, is it? I did not know that. Which is quite cool. So I've never told, I've never mentioned. Yeah, Figuera is just Portuguese for fig tree. So I'm Hmm. literally a fig tree. Or isn't isn't de Oliveira Um, the same as like olive tree? I I think it's an uh, an olive tree. Fucking poorers love their trees, eh? And then I know you also probably recognize a surname Nogueira. Which I understand is a nut tree. Oh God, my God! <laughs> well, fun, fun, fun fact about um, surname, just that surname in particular. So, if you've seen me, if you've seen photos of me, I could very easily put a yarmulke on and look very Jewish. Definitely. I've got the hair. I've got the big nose. <laughs> um, a- apparently, <coughs> the these these tree surnames. So it's, it's very Madeiran. Oh, okay. Um, apparently, there were a whole lot of Jewish people. Um, who were forced to? I, I don't like. I'm getting the details mixed up, but they were forced to adopt um, different surnames, and they all took trees as surnames. So mm. I very likely have Jewish heritage for that reason. I, if I'm not mistaken, I've heard Shani mention something similar to that. Mm. Um, to that, like effect. they were exiled from somewhere and they went to Madeira, mm. and then some shit happened there, and like I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lenska's shouting at me saying they were forced to convert. So they could hide their Not religion, the essentially. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Matthew, this is a question three. Matthew, do you waste your tea slash coffee like Alessandro yes. does, which he simply <laughs> throws away instead of reheating it or even drinking this, it? This is a hotly debated topic on Twitter. Uh, really? So, so what, do you, do you just chuck so, your So tra- your Tracy, Tracy Benson, who works uh, at Critical Hit, good friend of the show. Um, well, I don't know if she actually listens to the show, but she's a good friend. She's a good um, friend. But she was basically uh, talking about how she <clears throat> microwaves her coffee when it gets cold. And everyone was like, mm. what the fuck? Um, and who was it? I can't remember who said it first. They were like, if my coffee goes cold, I think it was Darren. Um, if my coffee goes cold, I just throw it away and make a new cup. And I was like, yeah, that's essentially what I do with the tea. Or well, sometimes I'll drink cold tea, but like if I've left it too long, like I'll just throw it away and just make a new cup. It's just water. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> That poor tea bag died for your tea. Okay, so what do you do? Of, what do you do? Uh, I'm in the camp where sometimes I've had coffee go cold and I just drink it cold. That's that's <laughs> fine. I get. I I find the idea of microwaving it super strange. I haven't done it for years, but there's nothing weird about it because it literally just heats it up. It it tastes the same. I now you've got microwaved coffee. Now it's radiated. I don't know. That's radiated. Yeah. I would have become a superior tea man. Yeah. COVID-19 is spread by microwaves. Pull down my roast like Spider-Man, shoot tea bags at bad guys. <laughs> wow. Could you even... Oh, God. That is a great <laughs> image. Just like tea bags coming out of his wrists or something. Uh, his catchphrase is, oh, you've been tea bagged. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Next question. Yeah, please. Alessandro, are you prepared for both next-gen consoles for day one purchases for work? Or are you getting them for free slash heavily discounted no. through your connections that may include the fig network? No. I have no connections <laughs> to discounted hardware. Let me just point that out. Uh, I don't even own an Xbox, despite working on. How <gasps> dare Xbox you? Brand. You're gonna get so fired on Monday. I, I own an Xbox controller though, which is which is close enough. Time. So, yeah, um, yeah. Are you buying? Are you buying any consoles there? Probably. Um, I'm, I mean, depending on how things are and what the prices are locally, I'd like to get both. Um, but who God. knows? The current exchange mm. rate is just... It's bad. It's Ooh, so bad. Let's let's just wait, yeah. Let's just wait for a bad exchange rate before we start talking about prices here. Yeah, I mean, it's like um, the uh, the MacBook Pro 13 came out recently 
and the configuration that costs a thousand seven hundred dollars in the states starts at forty thousand rand here. So it's just like fuck oh my, my life. God, that is hectic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I want to see the prices, but I, I've never, I've never bought a console on day one. Mm, yeah, I, I remember um, you got your PS4 later. And yeah, I, I <clears> usually <throat> usually wait a year or two, but the difference then is that I wasn't working. Yeah, <laughs> so that's that's the same thing. When I got the yeah, Xbox I, One, I was basically using money I got from an internship to buy it. So, mm, I mean, and I've I started saving for a new console like over a year ago. Oh, so I do remember you saying you were putting money. away every month just a little bit. Yeah. So I got a, l- a little kitty mm. of, of cash for that. Okay. Question five. Instead of KK Slidey, uh, Slidey, Slider, the cool and hippie chilled Snoopy variant coming to a time to perform, who would you like to come instead? Mm-hmm. Would it be. Pantera, Doja Cat, ACDC, Five, Drucker, Madonna, Michael Jackson, etc. Or perhaps someone who isn't or can't even sing, such as PewDiePie or... <laughs> PewDiePie, Cats. Jesus, no. Shit, I'd love to see a digital version of Lupin or Luna Serenade. Yo, that'd be cool. It's my island. <laughs> Lupin, um, like, with that, that weird gibberishly speak, like, me, me, <laughs> me, me, just like... Wait, okay, when you hear your villagers singing mm. randomly in the, in the village square, do you get happy or angry? I like it. It makes Lenska very angry. Really? <laughs> but it's so happy. She They're finds, just singing. She finds, it very, she finds it very irritating. But sometimes they <laughs> harmonize with one another. It's so awesome. Oh, no, I, I, I love it. it. She takes out her net and she starts whacking them. Wow, that's so rude. <laughs> she oh, doesn't God, deserve KK Slider on her island. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, so I would have, you, have island? I w- you know who I think would make the transformation to a Animal Crossing villager quite well is Ed Sheeran, just like get oh. like a <laughs> like a little like shaggy dog with like oh orange hair God, Ed Sheeran hilarious. and he plays the guitar like and he's like a one man band that'd be great it'd be perfect yeah uh, let me tell Lenska Alessandro said you'd have Ed Sheeran come perform at his island as a digit. <laughs> She just toothbrush in mouth. She says, "Why?" Because <laughs> uh, Ed Sheeran's better than KK Slider. You heard it here first. Ed Sheeran's better than KK Slider. Yeah. Okay, she agrees. <laughs> <laughs> well, she doesn't like any of the Animal Crossing singing, so of course she exactly, agrees. So. What's your That's What's good. your favorite KK Slider track? I I don't know. I've I haven't taken the time. So the thing is, I always have my music thing in my house randomized. Oh, uh, okay. But because I have so so much music now, it's you don't know what's of, playing. I don't know what's playing, but I, I do still. Uh, the moments I hear KK Waltz, yeah, well, KK I Waltz is a good time. Yeah, it's so good, and it gets stuck in my head. Like, KK say, Techno and KK Rock are really good as well. Um, I don't have KK Techno. The one, the one I got recently, which I like a lot, is um, like surfer music. So it's like. Yeah. KK Surfer, uh, it's so good. Yes, I've got that. It's so good. It's good. Did you it's did good you get time. my presents in Animal Crossing, by the way? What did you send I me? I sent again? you like cat slippers or something. Oh, you sent me cat paws, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I love that thing. It's so good. <laughs> I loved because I think your message was meow. Yeah. Also <laughs> <laughs> open the cat the, the, the presents like cat slippers, like, oh you son of a bitch. Speaking of Animal Crossing, I, I tuned in for the first time yesterday to Gary Witter's uh I think it's called Animal Talk or Animal Talk. Animal Talk- Talking. <clears throat> uh, uh, animal Talking. Really? Yeah. So it's basically a talk show that's hosted through Animal Crossing, which is a fucking it's genius so idea. Um, it's so and it's though. catching so much traction. But the the mm. thing that I saw this week was um, an episode with... Uh, T-Pain. Or, well, okay, so the, he had an episode with T-Pain, but there was an episode the day it's after so with funny. Elijah Wood and Danny Trejo. Oh, yes. And just like... It's can, like, what is this show? It's crazy. Can, can I just tell you, because uh, obviously I recognize the name Elijah Wood, and I was like, who's Danny Trejo? Like, I, 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 oh, I, man, Machete. Isabel, but I don't, yeah, but I, I don't know who, like, the name rings about. I don't know who it is. And I saw him like, oh, my God, it's this yeah. guy, Like, the, the toughest looking dude you'll find. Badass motherfucker, yeah. <laughs> It's so funny. It's a game that keeps on giving. I, I really, it's just such a cool, I, see, I, I think he's got a really cool format there because he's like, everyone's on like, a voice chat thing and chatting but they're using animal crossing to emote and he's got this really cool studio set up and it's just so clever i love i love that he's got a dude on the drum yes just there. to introduce like, people <laughs> <laughs> it's so good it's so funny it's, a, it's actually that that guy on the drums i don't know because you you listen to kind of funny and we both do but 
Remember a while back they were talking about that game uh, Ding Dong Exile or something like that? Yeah, it's yeah. the creator of that game is, is, is Adam. It? Oh yeah, it's so funny. That's amazing. <clears throat> Shit. It's great, yeah. Okay. Question six. Could you guys explain the appeal of skateboarding games? As a non-skater, I simply couldn't get into any skateboarding games to find it entertaining besides the soundtrack. Oh, the soundtracks are um, a big draw for me as well. I, I don't know. Like, to be honest... I mean, I probably will try the new Tony Hawk 1 and 2. Mm. Um, but since the OG Tony Hawks and PlayStation 1, I've never been compelled to play like skate or anything. So I'm, I'm the I same. Like I can't, say, I can't say there's an appeal, but I have a nostalgia, I guess, because I played that as a kid and I enjoyed it. So I, I liked skateboarding I as a kid because it's like, I guess as a kid, you're always like, I wish I could skateboard. But also, yeah. the Tony Hawk games are so flexible. Like, you could pull off ridiculous nonsense, like, pretty mm. easily. I'm not super into, like you said, skate. And I think the new one out is Session, where it's very much a more simulator-focused take on skateboarding. Like, I don't really yeah. care for that as much. Um, but I like, like, the Tony Hawk Underground games, which added, like, a story and made it even more ridiculous. Mm. Um, so I, I think they just they're just fun to mess around in, and it's it feels good to yeah. pull off stupid tricks. It's the same way I, I the same reason I like SSX. Um, like mm. I'm not a snowboarder, but man, those games are fun to pull off tricks in. A lot of fun, yeah. Yeah, you get them down. Okay, question. This should be so a well, new SSX. Oh earlier. my god, I'd love one. Oh my god. Or a remake of SSX, SSX Tricky oh, or something. Oh my god. Oh, SSX Tricky was Yo, it? Were... Was that on PlayStation 2? Two. Yeah. I love Shit, that game that so fun. much. It was really good. Question seven. Do you guys still keep in touch with Naughty Dog Naka, such as swapping muffin recipes, etc.? Oh, we literally uh, just mentioned it earlier, yeah. Yeah, by, by mm. the random mention on Twitter or something, I don't really keep in contact with him, but you do. Yeah, I'm, I'm part of a Slack channel where he's there, so we chat every now and then. We, okay. we were chatting a lot about Half-Life Alex recently because he finished it as well, so... It's oh, good okay. to chat with what him. Did you think of oh, that? he loved it as well. He, it yeah, was just cool. cool to chat to someone about the ending. Um, so yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Chat to him every now and then. Question eight: Why don't you guys take a short breather during the podcast recording instead of being Spartans pushing your way <laughs> through two hours of conversation? Well, to, to be honest, the time goes so quickly. Yeah. Like I don't even realize it. I mean, we, we we've got the format down, which we've we've never changed, and it just goes by so quickly. Mm. Like. I don't at all become mindful of like, oh my God, like we've been talking two hours. Like I wish we had a break between. It just mm, mm. goes. Yeah. it Like you said, it's like, it just, it it's happens. Like, it's like being out with friends or with family where you'll like talk the night away. You don't, mm. you don't really realize how quickly time goes. Also, so we're, we're big boys. No we go to the bathroom things. beforehand and, <laughs> you know. I did dawn me today. I was like, as I sat down, I was like, oh, should I pee before? Yeah. Or? Uh, it would be like we totally could I could could totally could be like hey I just need to uh, go pee quick but I'm like nah I'm fine it's okay yeah, exactly okay last question will we ever see the return of custom soundtracks that were heavily punted on the Xbox 180 using Spotify or similar devices does not count since there isn't a single music service that has up to date an up to date music collection for example you most probably won't find the sun- soundtrack to Interstate 76 on Apple iTunes. As for how to put in the music besides using online subscription music services, could just rip a CD just like the Xbox 180 did or dump DRM free music files mm. via Flash to the console. I do remember doing that a lot on the 360, mm. um, having like music that I dumped onto the Xbox 360 and then the OS, which at the time was mind-blowing to me, would let you play music over whatever game you were playing. So I remember mm. playing a lot of FIFA while having music playing um, mm. in the background and... Yeah, I put it this way. I think far more people use um, subscription services for their music now. So <clears throat> the integration of like Spotify into Xbox One, I think PS4 has it as well, um, uh, to yeah. let you like overlay music onto your games is where it's going to go because that's mm. it, that's just where it is now. It's like It's like saying you want a, a way to like burn Blu-rays to your PS4 when something like Netflix exists on it. Like the library is always yeah. not going to be complete, but that's the most convenient way, I think. Yeah. And I must say like, I agree. You Not every music service has everything, but 
the likes of Spotify, for example, comes very close. Mm. Like, there've been uh, there's been stuff that I won't find on Google Music that I that's just on Spotify. Well, Google Music's shutting down, so yeah, it's not making the jump. To, uh, the, so the only reason I was on Google Music was because of the free data that uh, I'm now going to make the jump to Spotify. Happily. There's a family plan now, so that's cool. Yeah, I actually saw it. I did some some research this week, and Lenska and I both use Spotify regularly. So hundred bucks a month. It's yeah, hundred bucks a month slash fifty bucks a month. Yeah, exactly. Right. And you can invite like six nothing. people, so eventually you can yeah. be. Yeah, but it's a good time. I I I like the fact that um, was it dangerous driving? Uh, that basically said we don't have a a soundtrack, but we've integrated with Spotify so that you can play your own soundtrack. I think. That's a really clever way of smaller studios saying we can't secure the rights to big licensed music, but we found a way for you to play what you want when you're playing our game. Mm. Yeah. So that's cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. I don't think yeah. I don't think we're ever gonna go back to an age where like there's a big deal made of hey, you can rip your your favorite CDs to this and play the music from them. Like I just don't see that happening. That's yeah. Likewise, and that's that's all the questions. Nothing on Instagram this week. Nope. Ah, oh, damn. Sweet nothing. Hot diggity damn. Sweet nothing. Quarantine's getting to people. It's getting so bad. If you want to send us questions, you can uh, email us just like Migs did on checkpointchatpodcast at gmail dot com. You can also message us on Instagram at checkpointchat, on Twitter at checkpointchat, Facebook dot com slash checkpointchat, and we have a TikTok page. All of the places. All of the places. And soon, <laughs> more places. I have a TikTok page. <laughs> soon, more places. Soon, more oh. places. Next week is oh. episode 100. Holy shit. What are we doing? We're we eating cake. I'll, I'll eat cake on stream. I don't care. Your dad can make some pistache for you. Mm. Ask Lenska to make granadilla cake. Did I send you that recipe? I don't think so. Okay, I'm going to send it to you. Send it. Oh, now I'm hungry. Yeah, you for can pistache. make pistache. It's. <laughs> really, really good. Really, really good. Some good, some good crack. Yeah, I've got some banana oh. bread waiting for me in the kitchen. I'm very excited. Oh boy, mm. that's cool. Mm. I think I might make some bread today. Oh yeah, with some fresh craving, some fresh Ooh, bread, fresh bread and butter. Oh my god, oh, so nom, good. Nom, nom. Yeah, awesome, oh, cool. That's that's episode, episode ninety nine. Can you believe can it? Can you believe it? Ninety nine. We're gonna hit triple digits. And next can you year. believe it? A hundred uh, is definitely gonna be in remote situations. Yeah, I, I've. I can't believe we've run out of episodes to crack uh, age jokes. Yeah, we for the longest time we crack we like, that ship sailed so 50, long ago. But mid life <laughs> crisis episode episode seventy five. Uh, we're elderly. Episode hundred. We did, yeah, we did. But we not. Now, now, now we now we're getting into like <laughs> episode hundreds. The the last episode we're rebranding to uh, yeah. Cat point, cat point chat. Uh, Loop and Luna take episode one with some guests. I listen. I'd I'd watch that. <laughs> We should we should just start okay. the podcast in Animal Crossing now. Meow. Oh yeah, we yeah, should. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Or Let's or we that. get maybe, really maybe, edgy maybe and we started in like second life or something like that. Oh, holy shit. No, this is fun. Yeah, this is fun. This. This, this podcast is fun. Yeah. Um, it's a good time. If you've been listening for all ninety nine episodes, thank you for listening. If you're new, thank you for yeah, listening thanks, too. Guys. We don't take favorites here. We don't, we don't. <clears throat> yeah, but we'll catch you guys next week. We'll then. be back next week for episode one hundred. Exciting. Setting stuff. Have a good week. Good Lord. Stay safe in quarantine. Goodbye. Bye. Yeah, don't die. Goodbye. <laughs>